So iPadOS 26 is finally here and honestly this might be the most exciting iPad software update we've seen in years. If you've just updated your iPad you're probably wondering where to even begin because Apple's packed in a ton of features that make the iPad feel more powerful, more flexible and in many ways more like a Mac than ever before. This update really is a turning point and if you're a first time iPadOS 26 user there are things you should absolutely check out right away. Now iPadOS updates usually bring refinements, smoother multitasking here, slightly redesigned app there but this time Apple's gone much further. With iPadOS 26 they've taken the iPad's identity as a touch first device and fused it with desktop class features from the Mac. The result is a system that feels almost hybrid. You can keep using your iPad in that simple full screen way, or you can lean into windowed multitasking, advanced file management, and new desktop like utilities. And that choice is what makes this update so good. So let's walk through everything you should try out the moment you install iPad S26, starting with what I think is the single biggest change the brand new menu bar. For the first time ever, apps on iPads have a proper macOS style menu bar. All you have to do is swipe down from the top of the screen when you're inside an application and there it is, just like on the Mac, you'll see the app name on the far left with drop downs like file, edit, format, view, window and help. And the really clever part is that it's dynamic. So in Safari, for example, you'll see bookmarks and history, whereas in a writing app, you might get options for formatting or layout. It's such a small addition on paper, but in practice, it changes how you think about apps on iPads. Instead of hunting for hidden buttons or awkward gesture menus, you've got a clear structure place to access commands, and it makes every app feel just a little more professional. But Apple did not stop there, they've completely reworked how multitasking works and this is where you want to spend some time experimenting. Say goodbye to slide over and split view, they're gone, instead iPad S26 introduces windowed apps, you'll find this in settings under multitasking gestures or you can even toggle it from control center. Once you enable it your iPad transforms into something that looks and behaves way more like a MacBook. You can even open multiple windows of the same application, resize them by dragging the handle in the bottom corner and move them around by pulling on the menu bar. Drag a window to a corner and it snaps to half the screen, stack multiple windows on top of each other if you like, and if things get cluttered just tap the home screen and your open windows scatter neatly to the edges making room for you to launch something new. For first time users this is probably the single most mind blowing change. If you've always found iPad multitasking clunky or limited you have to try this out. It finally feels like Apple's cracked it and the best part if you don't want to use it you don't have to. You can keep using your iPad in the classic full screen mode if you want. That's a beauty, flexibility. Now quick pause before we move on, if you're finding this useful, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. It's completely free, it helps the channel out massively and it means you'll never miss my iPadOS breakdowns, iPhone 17 coverage and plenty more Apple content. So go on, join the Saran Bike gang now. Now let's zoom into the details because Apple's brought over some familiar macOS touches. Check the top left corner of any app window and you'll see the iconic traffic light buttons. Yes, the red, amber and green circles are now on the iPads. Tap red to close, amber to minimize and green to maximize. Long press them and you'll get even more options like moving or tilting windows or parking an app off screen to quickly open another one. It feels instantly familiar for a Mac user, but it's also intuitive for iPad users who've never touched macOS. And once you've got multiple apps open, you'll want to try App Expose. Swipe up from the bottom of the screen and you'll see all your windows in your current space laid out beautifully. It's like mission control on a Mac but tailored for your iPads. You can scroll to see all your other open apps too, whether you're full screen or windowed. This is such a useful way to get a bird's eye view of what you're working on. And I guarantee first time iPadOS 26 users will end up using this all the time. While you're exploring, make sure to check out the new preview application. This is another Mac staple that's finally arrived on the iPad with preview you can open, edit and mark up documents, PDFs and images and because it's on iPads, Apple Pencil support makes it even better. Signing a PDF, highlighting a contract, annotating an image, it all feels seamless. The app even doubles as a document scanner so you can capture physical pages and work with them digitally in one place. This is a huge step forward for people who use the iPad for work or school and honestly it's one of the apps I recommend trying as soon as you update. Now if you use a magic keyboard to connect to mouse, you'll notice another small detail that makes the iPad feel way more like a Mac. 
The cursor is no longer that floating bob, it's now a proper arrow pointer. Shake it and it enlarges so that you can find it just like on macOS. Again, subtle, but it makes the iPad feel less like an overgrown iPhone and more like a true desktop machine. Speaking of desktop-like experiences, you will definitely want to dive into the Files app. Apple's completely reworked this in iPadOS 26. And if you've ever felt like file management on the iPad was a weak point, this fixes so much. The new list view feels almost exactly like Finder on a Mac. You've got resizable columns, collapsible folders, filters, and much more detail at a glance. You can even customize your folders with colors, icons, and emojis, and it all syncs across devices. Another great addition is the ability to set default apps to file types. Finally, if you prefer opening PDFs in a third-party application instead of preview, or you want images to default to Photoshop instead of photos, you can do that. Just long press a file, choose open with, and set your default. It's the kind of thing Mac users take for granted, but iPad users have been waiting years for. And while we're still on files, don't forget to try adding folders to a dock. Long press a folder, hit add to dock, and suddenly you've got quick access to it from anywhere. You can view the folder in a grid or fan layout, and you can even expand the dock itself to hold up to 23 icons now. Plus, there's a new setting to also hide the dock, just like a macOS. Combine that with Apple's new liquid glass design, which makes the dock shinier and more transparent, and it feels like a proper desktop launcher. Now, multitasking files are the big headline features, but there are a couple of extras you should absolutely check out as a first-time iPad S26 user. First, background activities. If you're exporting a big video in Final Cut or downloading a huge file, you you no longer have to just sit there staring at the progress bar, you can switch into another application and the task will keep running in the background with progress displayed as a live activity. This makes the iPad feel so much more capable for real work because it's not locking you into one app at a time. And then there's the new phone app. Yes, iPads can now place and receive calls. It works through Wi-Fi calling linked to your iPhone, so your number stays the same, and you can take advantage of tools like call screening, live translation, and hold assist. It's not gonna replace your phone, obviously, but if you use your iPad as your main work device on a desk, being able to take calls without reaching for your iPhone is surprisingly convenient. All of this together makes iPadOS 26 a massive update. But here's the thing, not every iPad will get the full experience. Older models are capped at full app windows at a time, while newer iPads can handle more. So for example, if you have an M-series iPad, you'll get the most out of windowed apps and multitasking. But not to worry, because every iPad that can run iPadOS 26 will get all these features, so no one's left behind. The bigger question, of course, is whether all this makes the iPad a true Mac replacement. And honestly, that depends on you. If you've always wanted desktop style multitasking and better file management, this is the closest we've ever seen. But if you love the iPad for its simplicity, that's here too. And that's what makes iPadOS 26 so great. Choice. But now I want to hear from you guys. Do you prefer the classic simple iPad experience or are you excited to lean into the macOS-like features? And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe because I'll be diving into everything Apple has coming next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.